Welcome to a look at a card-driven train game, Yardmaster. Yardmaster was designed by Stephen Aramini and features art and graphic design from Daryl Lauder and Dan Thompson. Now, Yardmaster was successfully kickstarted back in 2014. You don't hear many games that were kickstarted back then and published in North America by Crash Games. Interestingly, since then, it has been rethemed and republished as Aramini Circus in most of Europe, but not republished here in North America. Now, Yardmaster plays two to five players, games taking under half an hour. Uh, I'd say 15 minutes is probably the average. And this small box game has a nice low MSRP of $19.99 US dollars. Now, Yardmaster was awarded the 2015 Mensa Recommended Award and also won the 2014 Best Light Game Award from ION. In Yardmaster, you control a freight yard trying to get your cargo train loaded first by being the first player to hit a set goal of points. You do this by collecting cargo cards and then trading them in to purchase rail cards. These rail cards are each worth one to four points, but can only be added to your existing train if either the color or cargo type of the car or the point value matches the last car on your train. Rail cars that don't match go into your sorting yard and can be added to your train on future turns. I gotta say, this sounds much more interesting as a train game to me than connecting train routes across a map. Though I am sure there are train gamers out there that would argue this still isn't officially a train game. But for our thoughts on that, you can check out our What is a Train Game podcast episode. Now, the European version of this game, uh, the Aramini, Aramini Circus, is the exact same game. Like It has the exact same cards, the exact same distribution of cards. There's no change in the rules, but a change in the theme. So instead of using rail cards, you are in charge of a traveling circus where you're adding animal cars to your growing circus train. Now, what this version does feature is very colorful and cartoony artwork to go along with this theme change. Now, I guess they haven't noticed that uh, circuses are kind of a really bad and exploitive form of entertainment these days. Yeah, uh, maybe that's different in the EU. They take care of the animals more. I don't actually know. <laughs> I do think it's an odd choice, and it seems like an odd game to market to kids, uh, to be honest. This is not as light a game as I would try to sell to kids. Now, since I got my copy of Yardmaster by buying it off another local gamer, I don't have an unboxing video to share with you as we normally would. But what I will say here is the components are what you would expect. They're, they're not above and beyond, and they're nothing to complain about. The game does come in a very sturdy, small rectangular box, really thick cardboard. Like, I don't know what they expect you to just stack on this thing, but you could use this as, you know, a support piece in your house. Uh, the inside of the box is divided into three sections. The first holds cargo cards. The middle has a bunch of tokens. And the last one holds the rail car and engine cards. So you got three different decks really like everyone gets a rail card and then you have two main decks you shuffle them up card quality here is excellent um i personally love the minimalist art style they went for in the original version of the game now the new one like is more of a oh what's that but man it looks cluttered whereas this is highly functional very easy to see from across the table between both iconography and color differences for people who may have vision issues all right, well, now that we know what you get in a copy of Yardmaster, how about you give us an overview of play? All right, this one's not very complicated at all. You're going to start the game with an engine. You place it down in front of you. You're going to shuffle up the rail cars and put out a FARC four-card market. You then randomly give each player an exchange token, placing any remaining ones in the center of the table. Shuffle the cargo card deck and deal five to each player. Then flip over the top card and place it as a starting discard pile, which you'll recognize from a bunch of popular traditional card games. The player who last rode a train is the start player. The player to the right of that start player gets the Yardmaster token. Or just use Schwazi because stupid first player systems are stupid. <laughs> we all know Sean's opinion on that <laughs> one. Now, each turn, you're going to take two actions. You can do the same action twice, or you can do less than two. It's up to two. It's May. You may take two actions. First action is draw a cargo card, add it to your hand. This can come from the top of the cargo deck or from the top of the discard pile. Now, it's interesting that the discard pile is as good as the deck here. That's not something you see often in games. 
Yes, and it's important because when you buy a rail card, you discard a number of cargo cards of the appropriate type equal to the score value of the rail car you wish to purchase. Anything you discard is now available from someone else to take. So the order you discard in can matter. Now, there are five types of cargos and five matching types of rail cars. Rail cars come in value of one to four, but they're distributed so there's only one four and there's four ones and the other two are equally spread out. Now, rail cars, um, when you purchase your rail cards, you can also use your exchange token. Now, your exchange token lets you trade in two to one of one specific good. So you can trade in two of a red for a yellow if you have the appropriate exchange token. So your usual sort of market. Now, your final choice of action is to swap that exchange token. You can either swap the one you have with another player, or if there are less than five players, you can swap with one of the tokens in the center of the table. Note at all times, each player can only have one exchange token and will always have one exchange token. So the exchange tokens are unique as there's only one for each type of cargo. Mm -hmm. So you need to have the right token to make the right exchange you're looking for, which is yep. why you might use that or action to trade around uh, so that you can line up that big play later yep. on. Now, after buying a rail car, if it's your first rail car you bought, you just attach it to your train. If it matches the color or type or the value of the last card in your train, it must be added to your growing train. So first one you buy has to get added. But then the next one only gets added if it matches either the number or the color. And the color also represents a type, like yellow is green. Now, any rail car bought that doesn't connect your train immediately goes into what's called your sorting yard. So just a tableau in front of you. Now, after adding a rail car to your train, later turns, you always have to check. So you add a new one to your train, you have to check to see if anything in your sorting yard can then be added to your train. And after you add that one, you have to see if anything else in your sorting yard can keep being added. And you have to add any cards that can legally now connect. Note, you can do in that in any order of your choosing. So you can kind of break the combo if you're wanting to save up for something later. So it's like playing crazy eights with trains. Yeah. You're trying to get a chain of colors and or values stacked up in your yard that will, if all goes well, line up all at once when you get that one right card to trigger a cascade. And they all, all the, all the uh, box cars chug, chug, chug out of your yard and slam into the back of the train. Yes. This is the game of shunting trains, really. If you've ever watched a train car shunt, usually while you're waiting to get somewhere important, that's what you're doing in this game. Now, in addition to this, there are 10 bonus cards in the cargo deck. When you draw one of these, they go into your hand like normal. They then can be played on a later turn. Now, playing one of these bonus cards does not take one of your two actions. These let you do some type of one-time advantage. You play it, you do the thing. These include things like exchanging cargo cards one for one, so it's better than your normal exchange rate, getting free actions, taking a card from the cargo discard pile, and more. There are 10 of these. They're clearly explained in the rule book. I'm not going to get into all 10 here. Now, when one of these cards is played, this is important. They're on placed on top of the discard pile. Now, these cannot be picked up. So remember when you take the draw action, you can pick from the top of the deck or the discard, but you can't if it's one of these bonus cards. To remind you of that, there's a giant red X on these to remind you you can't draw them. Well, free actions are always nice. Now, we mentioned earlier that the player to the right of the start player gets a yard master token. What this is, is they're the yard master this turn. They have an extra bonus action. So instead of two, they can take up to three actions. There's a, it's a two-sided token. You can flip it to show if you've taken your action if you want, but most of the time it's pretty easy to remember. Now, at the end of the round, start player passes to the left like normal. You go clockwise. But the yard master token passes to the right. Now, the game ends immediately when a player hits the point total, which is placed on the player count. And your score is the total value of all the cards in your actual train, not counting the cards in your yard. Those haven't been added to your train yet. Right. So just again, it's weird that the uh, your your yard master token is not your first player token. Mm -hmm. It goes in the opposite direction of the first player around the yes. circle. And to be honest, that is the hardest thing to get right. If oh, you're I used bet. to playing any <laughs> other game, you're going to screw yeah. this one up at first. Because your first seems... game is going to be extreme because you're going to think yard master means start player and it's not. Yeah, it, it, it just seems that way. It, it, yeah. it really does. Now, there are some minor changes of playing with only two players, and they're all about the Yardmaster token. So I mentioned earlier, the Yardmaster token's two-sided. But what happens is you pass it to the other player, and it starts on the backside. 
Then on their turn, they just get to flip it to the front side. So basically it takes a turn to charge up. So it's not like I get three actions and you get three actions. It's I get two actions, you get two actions, I get three, you get two, I get two, you get three. And again, you're tracking this with the token. Other than that, gameplay is identical, though I will note the two and three player tokens, uh, two and three player game requires more points than a three or four or five player game. All right, well, uh, now we have a good idea of how to play. What are your thoughts on this card-driven train game? So to be honest, I'm going to start with my thoughts on an earlier game. Uh, well, actually, it's not an earlier game. They were released at the same time. But my first experience with Yardmaster wasn't this game. Instead, it's the even simpler, quicker game called Yardmaster Express. Now, this is from the same publisher, Clash Games. was also Kickstarted, but this is from a completely different designer. Yardmaster Express is a drafting game like Seven Wonders or Sushi Go, where you get a hand of cards, pick one card to add to your train and pass your hand to the next player. There's no tokens, there's no cargo cards, there's no purchasing, there's no market. Instead, you're just playing cards right from your hand. Now, the train building rules are the same. When playing that card from your hand, it has to match either the value or the number of the one you just played. So the twist here is that if it doesn't, you play it face down, and it's a wild card that works, but it's worth way less points. So Express is a super light filler. Uno is actually a heavier game than Yardmaster Express. I, that has to be based on Board Game Geek. I don't know on that one. I, I actually think Yardmaster Express may be, I, I think some train game fans rated the weight on that a little lower. There is some definite strategy in Yardmaster Express, especially when you know what you passed, right? If you're playing four players and you have five cards, you know you're getting one of those back. You don't get that in Uno. You know, Uno. So I, I personally think it's a little higher than Uno. But yes, it is way lighter than this. I, I like Yardmaster Express. I actually really enjoy it. Um, it was my friend, Sean knows him too, uh, John Salila, who taught me how to play Yardmaster Express. Game pay is super quick, though. Like, it's lightning quick and short, like five minutes to play around with that. Like, you literally are getting a hand of cards. You're passing them so many times and someone wins. Um, it's fun. Like, for five minutes, it's fun. But I like games with a bit more meat on them, and I think everyone's well aware of that. That's why when Sean Hamilton, not Sean from Hamilton, listed his copy of the full version up for sale on Facebook, I got to hold him right away and said, I got to have it. And he was happy to give it to me because he knows he'll be able to play it whenever he wants because I game with Sean pretty often. Well, at least I used to when we weren't in the middle of a pandemic. So I finally got to try this out and I am so glad I got this off Sean. And I know he regrets selling it to me to a point because every time I share a picture of this online, Sean's like, oh, I shouldn't have given that game up. You know what? It's still here. We can still play. Fair enough. So this is still a filler game, but yeah. it has upped that complexity beyond Uno uh, with an economy and more. Yeah. I, to be honest, this is exactly what I want, right? Like I knew this was a more complicated version of Yardmaster Express, and that's exactly what it is. It's Yardmaster Express with more decision points, more tactical options, more long-term strategy. While I like Yardmaster Express, I love Yardmaster. I am really been enjoying this one lately. It is still not a heavy game though, right? This is still a quick to teach, easy to learn game. Like I just did it. Like I, I, I'm pretty sure I just taught you how to play without, the only thing I didn't do was explain what the five, 10 different special cards are, but they say what they do right on them. For such an easy to learn game though, Yardmaster has a surprising amount of depth. And quite a bit of this depth is um, like kind of hidden under the covers. You probably won't even notice it your first couple plays, but it starts to sink in once you start realizing what's going on. And the biggest distinction is the distribution of the cards. When you actually learn that, wait a minute, there's only one four of every color and wait, there's four ones and you start card counting. That's when you really start to see the depth of this game. Yeah. So one thing to note is that the lower rating of Yardmaster on board game geek has been impacted mostly by two factors from looking mm -hmm. into it. Uh, one, People who like train games and thought this was one, but decided otherwise. Yeah. And two, people who thought it would be more complex than it is and just hate on filler games. Yeah, I, I, by putting Yardmaster and if I remember the Kickstarter even had like Master of the Rails or something like that as a subtitle, which didn't end up in the final version of the game. I think there were some players out there that were hoping 18xx in card game for. And no, that's not what this is. Now, what I will say is your first couple games of this, when I first played it, I just played. Like, I had no clue what the distribution was. Heck, I didn't even click in that there are five types of cargo, one for each player. So if you're playing five players, there's and there's one exchange token for each side. Like, that makes sense, but I just don't think of it, right? By the time you play your third game, though, you're going to know 
the, the number of cards there are, and you're going to know how many are left in the deck, especially by mid game. If you're not counting cards, you're not playing this game properly. You have to be looking at everyone and going, all right, what are my chances of getting the three of yellow? I know there's only two threes of yellow. Sean's got one. Does someone have one in their hand or is it still in the deck? All right, well, I'm going to use this card that lets me search through the deck to see if it's in there. Oh, it's not in there. Oh, someone's holding on to that damn three. So now I know my three's going nowhere. So I'm going to have to change that three to a blue because otherwise I'm never going to finish my train and so on. It's that de level of depth that you're eventually going to find. And another way that Yardmaster surprised me is the variety of different strategies that all seem to work, though all of them seem to be based on adapting your strategy to how the other players are playing. Like in the situation I just said, holding on to that three and knowing you're waiting for the three yellow and having changed what you were going to do. Like I have played a game where I tried to win just by collecting one cards and I got to say it almost worked. Because one cards are only cost you one resource to buy. They're dirt cheap. If you've got an exchange token, you could use two cards to get them. And while they're easy to combo, every one connects to another one, and there's a ton in the decks. But the other way is you could be the person going for the fours. Yeah, the fours aren't cheap, and there's only what, five of them in the entire deck. But like getting to the point total of 16, you only need four of those four cards to win the game. And again, we're not talking about a thinky Euro here. Well, no. For a filler card game, it's got some real decision points. Now, the sortie yard mechanic is honestly the best part about this game. Like, not only is it a very valid way to collect cars, you can also use it to collect cars you know the other players want. That's one of those steps above, right? The, the next level strategy in the game is... Not only am I going to try to set up that massive combo, like Sean suggested earlier, when your whole train yard comes out at once and you just run away with the game, it's also a really good way to notice that player is looking for a yellow three. Throw that into your train yard and give the other player a nice, and, and watch for the dirty look from the other player when you put it in there. Um, I love that shorting yard mechanic. And I love the calm behind wins that have come from it. And it just feels so good. Like, like if you're a player where you've got like only two or three cars out, meanwhile, someone else is like their train's taking up so much room on the table. They've had to start a second row. And then all of a sudden you got it set up so that if I just get the blue three, then I can play my green three. Then I can play my green two, my green two, my green one, my green one, my blue one, my yellow one, my red one, my red three. Boom. And then it's just such a great moment. It is so much fun. That also though is where adapting your strategy is so important because you look at other players train yards it's all open information right nothing's hidden here except for the cards in your hands and you're looking at that going oh you know what if he just gets a blue two he's going to be able to play his blue two his green three is blah 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 blah. so i have to make sure they don't get one and i gotta say that's one of those things that when you realize it all the other players are going to be hunting for that specific card to make sure that one player doesn't get it Nothing says fun game like ganging up on people. <laughs> Though really, even if you don't actively coordinate, it's just good gameplay to deny someone what they want if you can. Yes, and I will say to tie back to something we said earlier in this episode today, this is not a game I would recommend for Mr. Dave Hutchinson and his group. Now, this is what I love about this game. It's this tactical, instant, what do I do with what's in my hands, combined with the strategy of I'm going to grab that three for later because I know I have this bonus card that's going to let me do the thing, right? That combination of tactics and strategy that keeps me coming back and playing Yardmaster again and again. Like, honestly, right now, this is at the very top of my favorite filler game list. Now, I'll admit, I'm, just, I'm into it right now. It'll probably fade and there'll be other fillers that will come and go. But right now, if I'm like, oh, we have some time to kill, let's play some Yardmaster. And I got to say, every time we sit down and play, we don't just play Yardmaster once. It's like, no, let's play again. Or let's play again. It's usually two or three rounds in a row when I break it out. So overall, I dig it. I really dig Yardmaster. But I also like Yardmaster Express. And I recommend Yardmaster Express. It is a fun light trade game. It's nothing compared to the full game. This isn't that long. Like, like you're, you're maybe doubling the time of Yardmaster Express for a better game, in my opinion. This is a quick-to-learn, easy-to-teach, card-based train game with surprising depth and strategy. If you're looking for a new thinky filler, I don't think you can go wrong with this game. If you're a fan of train games, this offers up a very different approach to the train game theme. Now, earlier, Sean mentioned Ticket to Ride. And not Well, he didn't mention Ticket to Ride, but he mentioned building routes with your trains. If you're into those kind of games, or if you're a Ticket to Ride fan, I have a feeling your group will also dig this train game. 
especially due to the fact that in Ticket to Ride, you are using cars to buy it. You're, you're using cards to buy trains. Well, you do the exact same thing here, right? You're using your cargo cards to purchase rail cars. So that mechanic is going to be the same. So will the market being similar, right? Having four cards you can purchase from is also going to feel similar to Ticket to Ride players. And again, just be aware of what you're getting. It is a light filler card game. So, you know, don't expect that high decision point you know verging on 18xx train game yes it's just a filler game yeah if you're one of those people who think that only play real train games and real train games are only games with stock portfolios and rope building you're not gonna like this game this isn't for you uh though personally i love heavy train games i, I haven't done a lot of 18xx games but i'm a huge fan of steam um, and I love Yardmaster. I, I think this is a great filler with a similar theme. And I got to say, it's perfect for a train game night. Like this is a perfect game to wrap up after your 18X game. You just played 18XX games for 15 hours. Now you sit down and play a Yardmaster and have a beer with the group and relax and talk about how, man, if I had only sold this stock one turn earlier, I would have had a bigger portfolio and I would have took president and I would have, you know, that kind of conversation you have after an 18XX game. Now, I have seen a uh, suggestions that the European circus version is too cartoonish mm. and harder to take seriously as a result. So that is one thing to keep in mind for some of our uh, non-North American uh, listeners. Yeah, if you if you are trying to sell this game to an 18xx fan, you probably want to stick away from the cartoon circus game. Like, honestly, this is one of those games that's up there. Like, it's one of those games I think everyone should try. Even if you're not a fan of train games normally, this really is just an abstract game with a train theme. The mechanics are dead simple and easy to learn, but they interact in a neat way. And I think everyone is going to find joy in doing a nice three plus card combo from your sorting yard to your train, especially if that's where you get that come from behind win. Now, the only problem I do have with this game, which often happens on our show, and I didn't do the research before I started working on the review, and I apologize for talking this game up so much, is that you're going to have a hard time finding this one, at least the North American version. It looks like it's currently out of print. I looked around. I checked a bunch of my normal sources. I even checked sites like Noble Knight Games, who sells out of print games. They don't even have a copy of this right now. Now, while I can find Aramimi Circus in Europe stores, but also like uh, Board Game Bliss has a copy available. So people have been importing that version over here. I'm not seeing any copies of the original for sale. That said, I do have some good news. You can get the game for free. There is a free print and play version on Board Game Geek, a legit from Mind Clash or from uh, Crash Games. This isn't someone's pirated copy. Crash Games, as part of their Kickstarter for the game, released the print and play version of Yardmaster for free. So you know what? If you want to play Yardmaster, it's just going to cost you some ink and some paper, and you might want to put it on a little thicker card. You can print up and play your own copy. Not only is this a great way to get this out of print game, once it is back in print, this is a great way to try it before buying. Well, that's it for our review of Yardmaster. I invite you to also check out Mo's written review of this of this uh, game over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. Mm. 